Okay, I just want to show you a quick demonstration of how to balance chemical equations. So I am on page 249 of the book right now, and I'm just going to do a few example problems here to help you understand how this is done. So the reason we balance equations is because they need to obey the law of conservation of mass. So if you look right here at number 27, on the reactant side, I have one copper and two oxygens. On the product side, I have one copper, but only one oxygen. Now, the law of conservation of mass says that an oxygen atom cannot be destroyed in this reaction. So it's not okay for me to have two oxygens on this reactant side and one oxygen on the product side. So to fix this, I need to balance the equation. Now, a way to make sure that you're doing this correctly is to draw a little table. Okay, this left side represents the reactant side. This right side represents the product side. And I'm going to list every single element that I find uh, in the equation. Now, they're going to be the same elements on the left reactant side as they are on the product side. And now I'm going to write down how many of each element I see on each side. So on this left reactant side, I see one copper and two oxygens. On the product side, I see one copper and one oxygen. Okay, So I need to balance this. I need this to become a two to match this. So the only way you can change the numbers of elements is to add coefficients. A coefficient is a number that goes in front of one of these molecules. You cannot change the subscripts, that's these little numbers right here. You can't add numbers in between, so I can't add a 2 in front of this oxygen. I can only add a 2 in front of here. Okay, so now I have a 2 in front of there. This 2 affects both the oxygen and the copper. So now over here on this side, I have two coppers and two oxygens. So my oxygens are balanced, but now my coppers aren't balanced. That's easy to fix though, I can just go over here and put a 2 in front of that copper. And now that is a balanced chemical equation. Alright, let's move on to a harder one. Let's look at number 31. Alright, so again we can see this isn't balanced because I've got one AS arsenic on this side and two on this side. So I'm going to make that same chart that I made for the other one. So we have arsenic, chlorine, hydrogen, and sulfur on this side. Arsenic, chlorine, hydrogen, sulfur. Okay, and it's actually probably a good idea to do this in pencil. I'm being a bad example and doing it in pen, but if it's in pencil then you can erase things if you put the wrong coefficients. So that would be a good thing to do. On the reactant side I have one arsenic three chlorines, two hydrogens, and one sulfur. On the product side, I have two arsenic, one chlorine, one hydrogen, and three sulfur. All right, so as I'm looking at this, I am going to decide to balance the arsenic first. So I want this to become a two. The only way I can do that is to put a two right here. Okay, that affects both the arsenic and the chlorine. So now I have two arsenic. Now I had three chlorines to start with. Now that I've got a two in front, that two and three multiply. So I now have six chlorine. So now my chlorines are not balanced. I have six on this side and only one on this side. So the best way to fix that is going to be to put a six right here. That gives me six chlorines. It also gives me six hydrogens on this side. And finally, let's try and balance these hydrogens. I've got six on this side, two on this side. So if I put a three right here, that three times two is six. So now I have six hydrogens and three sulfurs. Okay, so there is the balanced equation. That is the answer. Okay, this is not the answer. This is just helping you get to the answer. All right, let's do a hard one. Um, let's do number 36, because it has parentheses, and those can throw people off sometimes. 
So number 36, right here, I have aluminum, hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. Over here again, I have aluminum, hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. It's a good idea to write these in the same order on both sides so that you can compare them easily. So on the reactant side, I have one aluminum, two hydrogens, one sulfur, and four oxygens. Over here I have two aluminums, because there's a two there, two hydrogens. Now there's one sulfur right here, but see how there's a three outside the parentheses? That three distributes to both the oxygen and the sulfur. So I have three sulfurs, and then since there's a little four by the oxygen and a three outside of it, those multiply together just like they would if you were in math and you were distributing something into parentheses. So it's a 12. Now, to go ahead and balance this, I see I have two aluminums here and only one over here, so maybe I might put a two right there. Now let's try and balance my sulfur. I have three on this side, only one on this side. So if I put a three right here, that affects a lot of things. Now I have six hydrogens, three sulfurs, and 12 oxygen. And that was really good because now my sulfur and my oxygen are balanced. My hydrogens are not. Um, I have six over here and only two over here. I can easily fix that by putting a three right here. And now I've got six. So now you can see this equation is balanced. All right, so hopefully that was enough help that you can get through uh, the mastery quiz or whatever assignment you're trying to do right now. So, best of luck!